Thank you, uh, Ron. And uh, it's really a pleasure to be here, uh, especially in a live-to-live -life meeting, face-to-face uh, -face meeting, I should say, a live meeting, which we've had not for a long uh, time. Uh, and I would like to thank the University of Strasbourg for hosting us uh, here today. Uh, the original title I had was a co-program partnership, and then I read the program and I saw that the title had changed into the voice of the stakeholders. But it's basically the same, so I decided to combine the two titles. This is the content. I will talk about the dream. I will talk about the history of the partnership, uh, the present situation with respect to the partnership, the future implementation of EOSC, or the possible future implementation, and uh, I will end with keep on dreaming. If I Google Delft University of Technology, then within a second I have 3 million, 33 million hits, uh, and we all know this is easy to find uh, something about the Delft University of Technology, but it's also easy to find the location we're here. Easy, you just plug in the name and Google Maps will know where it is, and you can go there if you have a, a, a GPS guiding uh, system. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do the same thing for data? Uh, and I'm not saying we should use necessarily Google for that. I very much agree with York. It could be Google, could be something else, but wouldn't it be nice if we could do it? So I plugged in data set on drying of gelatin, something I've worked on as a professor 30, 40 years ago. Well, this is what you find as the first part of the page. So you look up the PDF, and this is what you find in the PDF. Yes, there are data there. You can read them, you can, let's say, measure them, but you cannot use them. There are no metadata. There's no information on how these data were obtained, in what conditions, how I can reuse them. And if I want to have the data, then I have to approach the researcher, which I also had to do 40 years ago, which I did very often. So there has nothing really changed with respect to this. So wouldn't it be great if we all could find relevant data sets of our work and and as easy as we can find places in Google Maps or in Google uh, information on the web of fair data, and many things uh, would be possible with a search engine or whatever you call it, uh, where we do this. So therefore, we started EOSC. Well, not we, you started EOSC. The European Commission, the countries, a lot of people started EOSC. Uh, we've heard the word or the abbreviation. We now use it as a word for a long time, and we still not clearly know what it is and what it will be, but we are working on it in the partnership. We started in the years 2019, 2020 with a certain governance model, uh, let's say set up by the commission with two expert groups and a governance board and executive board. Then we jointly discussed with the commission in the executive board that a possible model would be to go for an AISBL, uh, an, an, an international association, in order to represent the stakeholders. And that's what we did, and that led to a co-program partnership, which uh, more or less started on the 23rd of uh, June last year, about a year ago. What's the presence? The presence is that the mission for this AISBL is to provide, to provide this single voice of advocacy and representation for the broader stakeholders. So the AISBL and the stakeholders are more or less uh, the same. We are to promote the alignment of the European Union research policy and the priority activities coordinated by the association, very much in line with what Sylvia said and in line with the era. And ultimately, the aim, of course, is to do this, what I just showed you as a dream. Ultimately, we want to enable seamless access to data through interoperability services that address the entire research data lifecycle, from the discovery to the management and the reuse. And I put behind that the dream. What is the present situation? The content of our MOU says that it is an establishment between two parties, the European Union represented by the Commission, the association that represents its members in this system, which are the stakeholders. It's a contractual arrangement, not legally binding, but it's a strong arrangement. The scope is to have expected financing from the side of the Commission and in kind input from the side of the partners to reach certain KPIs. And we have set up a covenance model for that, and we have by now agreed on uh, the rules of procedure for this. The duration, as a lot of people would not realize, is until the end of 2030 when all the projects of Horizon Europe have run out. So it's not until 2027 when the last bunch of projects starts, but till all the projects runs out. The activities are to take into account, sorry, the activities from the Commission side are to take into account the input and advice from the partners other than the Union, which is basically the uh, members of the association. 
uh, when identifying calls and topics and uh, to, to design their research and innovation activities. And this is uh, to be contributed through the work program. The activities and commitments from the partners other than the union, which are the members of the association, is to provide this input and advice, to give an in-kind contribution to the actions, and to give an in-kind contribution with additional activities they bring in, and possibly additional uh, investments in this domain. And as we have seen and heard and know from many universities and other organizations, there's a lot of investment going on. We do this in openness, transparent, etc. Also rules set out in the MOU, and of course there is a lot, maybe too much, monitoring and reporting going on in this whole system. Now the future. So this is what we have. And this is what we try to establish as good as possible. But how would we continue? Well, we recently had a strategic or strategy workshop, I should call it, with the board of the association. And we discussed four possible models. An open, community-driven initiative supported by governments where key players in the scientific and the data science community take on roles to further the goals of science, basically what we have now to a large extent. Or a confederated system where many independent operational providers align with each other and make a federated service with the providers. Or a centrally coordinated system, still distributed of course, with sub-elements delivered by the operational providers based on clear specifications led by European, national and regional infrastructures. Or one step further, a centrally operated single entity with central management, funding, procured international infrastructures and in addition to the national and regional infrastructures. Well, we, we haven't solved this issue, but let's say in general the tendency was in this direction. So I'm talking about the implementation of EOSC. I'm not talking about representing the stakeholders. And this is the implementation of EOSC. And in order to implement that, if we have too many parties going in too many directions, there's hardly anything to implement. So there needs to be a strong central coordination, at least, in my view. This is my personal view. This is not the view of the board yet. <laughs> you can always hope. Huh? I keep on dreaming. If I keep on dreaming, then I say, if in 2040, 50% of the relevant research data, data, publications, and software, that is, would be as fair as possible, then my dream would come true. By that, I mean relevant data, data seen relevant by the researchers. 50% is clear huh, of the research data. That is not all the data. And that is definitely only the relevant data. So 50% of the relevant data. And I think the relevant data is less than 10% of the data that are being produced, at least in the domains I have been working on. As fair as possible means as fair as possible at that moment in time, 2040. Then these standards uh, will be further developed. If this uh, has to be done worldwide. There's no use to do this only for Europe. If we don't do this worldwide, then my dream will not come true. So. In other words, when I will be able to find with a few clicks the diffusion coefficient of water as a function of the temperature, as a function of the water concentration, for different compositions of gelatin, the ones I'm interested in, then I will be able to predict the drying behavior of this material under different conditions, at different scales, in different setups of the different sets of, of drying equipment, using the computer program I have developed 40 years ago. Thus, this would save, and I can guarantee you, 50% of the energy use goes into drying. It would save a lot of time of development, and it would save a lot of energy for this application. This is one simple example from my own research, where I'm sure that if the data would be there with a few clicks, I could do something in a couple of weeks, which now, after four years, I have not been able to finish. So that is thanks to EOSC in 2040. Let's co-create it, and thank you for your attention.